Good morning, class. Hi, I'm Keith Moore, and we welcome you to Faith School. Faith School is the place where our spirit is fed, our faith grows stronger, and we learn how to be overcomers. You don't have to lose and lose and lose. You don't have to fail and fail and fail. The scripture said, for those that trust him and follow him, he always causes us to triumph in Christ Jesus. Find your Bible, get something to make a note with, come on into the classroom with us, and let's agree together for answers, things that matter, things that solve our questioning and our issues. Father, in Jesus' name, all of us agree together as touching this, asking you for the anointing of your Holy Spirit that teaches, reveals, quickens, reminds, even shows things to come, asking you for answers, asking you for help, uh, and give, it, give us, Lord, ears and eyes and hearts that can discern and see and hear and know things that we haven't seen before. Remind us of things you've already shown us and how to put it all into practice, how it fits together. We ask for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Go please to Hebrews chapter 10 in verse 35 that we're not to cast away our confidence. It has great recompense of reward. You have need of patience that after you've done the will of God, you might receive the promise. The just shall live by faith. But if any man draw back, my soul will have no pleasure in him. We're not of those that draw back, but those that believe to the saving of the soul. Uh, somebody needs to say it out loud. I'm going to make it. I'm going to make it. <laughs> You know, I, in the earlier days of our ministry, I began to see uh, some of the challenges that, that could befall and um, also began to see other ministries that had problems and, and failures and um, thinking, well, you know, these are some good people too. How can I make it and not come short and not fail and not fall? And... Um, uh, there's more, you know, a number of things that, that answer this, but one of the big ones is just confidence in how much God loves me. <laughs> I, one day I just, I just said it out loud, I'm going to make it. <laughs> and what, what I mean by that, I'm going to run my race. I'm going to finish my course. Yes, Anybody know what I'm talking about about that? Yes, well, how can I say that? Because a lot of people don't. A lot of people Come way short, you know, get off track, all kind of things. Why would I make it? It's not because I'm perfect. It's not because I know so much. It's not because I'm so smart. I'm counting on God's love for Keith <laughs> to get me through. What do you mean? He, he won't make me have that confidence in him. That's my part. He can do anything if I look to him for it. No matter how many times I might mess up, he can get me over it and through it if I look to him and let him help me with it. And I begin to see, well, if I fall, he'll pick me up. <laughs> Come on, are y'all with me or not? If I fall 10 times, he will pick me up 10 times. If I'm not getting it, he'll tell me again. If I'm still not getting it, he'll crank up the volume. If I'm still not getting it, he'll have somebody come by and shake me and go, Keith, hey, what are you doing? He will help me if I will listen, and I'm planning on listening, yes. right? He will help me, and with all of that going for me, why shouldn't I make it? I'm going to make it. Somebody say, I'm going to make it. I'm going to make it. Uh, everybody watching online, now you say it out loud. I'm going to make it. Come on, Eric, so you can say it with them too. I, I'm going to make it. I'm going, they left you hanging for a minute. I, I'm going to make it. What, what, what do you mean you're going to make it? I am going to run my entire race. I'm not going halfway and fail. I'm going to finish my course. Finish. Somebody say finish. I'm going to, I'm going to finish. I'm not going to be cut short. 
I'm not going to be prevented from it. I'm not going to fail in it to do it by the grace of God. Why? All I've got to do is hold on to God. All I've got to do is count on His love for me to help me through the next segment. All of us had made mistakes. And it's possible you could make some more before this is over. But the big thing is you hold on to Him. He will help me. He is helping me. I'm going to make this thing. Somebody say, I'm going to make it. I'm going to, I'm going to make it. Now, the, what will the devil tell you? <laughs> oh, you've already, you've already heard him say that. To you. He tells everybody the same junk, doesn't he? Huh? He does. You don't necessarily hear an audible voice, but it's very clear. The thoughts, the feelings that try to push on you. You're not making it through this. Not this time. You ain't going to make it. You are not going to make it. This, this is too much. Too much has happened. It's too far gone. It's too late now. You're not going to make it. Lies. Lies. Lies from the enemy. And why would he keep pushing you about it? I know some years ago, the Lord actually gave me a song as a result of what I'm about to tell you. But I had uh, in, stepped out to believe for something that was way beyond where we were. And it did not come to pass in the first few months or the first year or the first two years or the first two and a half years. And these thoughts were just coming to me every day or so. That's not working. You're further from it now than you were two and a half years ago. That's not going to happen. You're just, you know, kidding yourself. It's not working. It's not working. It's not working. And, and I didn't, you know, I wasn't putting it all together, but that thought just kept, every once in a while I'd realize that thought's there. I, it's not working. It's not working. And Phyllis and I remember distinctly, we walked, we went to a restaurant to eat some lunch. And, and I told her I'm going to go in here and wash my hands. And I'm standing at the sink washing my hands. And that thought came just, you know how thoughts are. And that thought came up to me again, just kind of out of the blue. And that's not working. And um, the Spirit of God, oh, thank God for the Holy Spirit. He's so smart. He, he brought up from inside me. He said, uh, if it's not working, why is he bothering you about it? Why is the enemy bothering If it's not working, then there's nothing to talk about, right? He said, the reason these thoughts keep coming to you that it's not working is because it is working. <laughs> it's working powerfully and you're getting really close to seeing it come to pass and the enemy knows if he can't get you to back off and stop there's nothing he can do to prevent it from happening <laughs> and that's where I got the song it came up in me hold on hold on keep believing be strong in a little while it's going to be all right hold on hold on it won't be long your faith will turn to sight and so I did. I just got sassy right there in the, in the bathroom washing my hands. I said, yeah, that's right. That's not working, huh? It's not working? Then what you bugging me about it for? It is working. <laughs> and I, 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 re, I got renewed and recharged in my faith. And within six months' time, it had come to pass. Oh, somebody say, praise God. Praise God. The thing that didn't look like there was any way it could come to pass, it came to pass. A lot of things don't happen overnight. Especially some of the big things. They don't happen every week or two, but you've got to stay on it. Time's passing anyway. You might as well be believing for something. But the enemy will come to you and whisper to you, it's not working. It's not. You know it's not. Look at it. Look at it. Nothing's happening. Nothing's going on. It's dead as a doornail. You're tired. They're tired. Nobody wants to talk about it. Nothing's happening. <laughs> if nothing was really happening, why would he be there pestering you, trying to convince you that nothing's happening? Or that you're not going to make it. The enemy operates like a predator. The Bible tells us this, that the devil goes about like, like what? Like a roaring lion doing what? Seeking whom he may devour. Don't you like that word may? <laughs> Didn't say going about devouring everybody that he wants to. No, may. And, and, and predators, oftentimes, they look for the stragglers, uh, the, uh, the ones isolated from the herd, and particularly the ones that are worn 
and tired are weak. That's easy pickings. And the enemy is especially that way. Uh, you know, it's, it's not so productive for him to really try to work on you when you're strong. But when it's been this happened, and then that happened too, and then this happened, he, he practices what I call the pile-up technique. You know, your faith was pretty good dealing with this, and it was a little strange when we started dealing with that. But now you're thinking, I can't deal with one more thing, man. I mean, this is just too much. And when it gets to that point, and especially if you've been kind of uh, laying back, hadn't been going to church, hadn't been reading your Bible, everything was good, you know, why did you need to? Well, because of right now. <laughs> and then the enemy, when you are feeling weak, that's when he wants to pounce on you. When you are straggling and struggling, and then that's when he'll bombard you with, you're not going to make it. You're not going to make it. You're too weak. You don't know. Nobody cares about you. Uh, people would be better off if you'd die and you'd leave. You just need to do everybody a favor and just take it. This is the devil. Mm -hmm. Come on, can you hear this? Yes. This is the devil trying to convince you of this. And that's why, uh, you know, you need to come to faith school. <laughs> and that's why if you ever hear anything like that, you need to be reminded of this day and it needs to come back up in you real strong and you need to say, I'm making it. I will make it. I'm going all the way. I'm running my whole race. I'm finishing my entire course. And I'm finishing strong with joy. See, the joy of the Lord, your strength. And Paul said, I, I finished my course with joy. That means I'm going to finish strong. Finish strong. And you might not feel like it at times, but you start talking that way. Give God some opportunity and time to work. Next thing you know, you'll be right back up to speed. Hallelujah. And you will be completing your course. In this 11th chapter, we got down all the way to verse 32, talking about Samuel. And I want us to go back again to the third chapter of 1 Samuel, 1 Samuel 3. We learned in previous uh, classes that Samuel's mother, Hannah, had faith that God heard her prayer. And that translated to Samuel, he's even named that. His name means God hears or God has heard. And we see that Samuel had faith that God hears. But we see that uh, advance into something, um, something else in this third chapter when we see that um, Samuel as a boy is laying down at night to go to sleep and he hears the Lord speak to him. And the Lord called his name. <laughs> of course, you know, what's the Lord calling him? God hears. <laughs> or I guess in his case, I hear. <laughs> right? <laughs> Think about that. Didn't he call it Samuel? Samuel. What's, what's God saying? I hear. <laughs> I hear. God hears. God hears. And uh, Samuel, the boy, the Bible said he didn't, he didn't know the, the word of the Lord at that point. He didn't know the voice of the Lord. He thought Eli was calling him. He thought it was just another man. And um, so he ran into the, Eli's bedroom and said, what? I'm here. And he said, I didn't call you. Go lay down. And the third time he realized something's going on here. And so he told him, this time go back. And when you hear it, you say, speak, Lord, for your servant hears. And we see the necessity to respond to the Spirit of God. Another way of saying this, yield to the Spirit. This is something that I, I struggled with as a teenager. And uh, I, I grew up around Pentecostal churches. My grandmother was secretary and treasurer of uh, one of the oldest Pentecostal churches in our community, taught generations of kids in Sunday school. And um, I knew being filled with the Spirit and speaking in tongues was real because I knew her. She got filled with the Spirit in the cotton field, picking cotton. <laughs> and 
This was down in uh, central Mississippi, and that would have been back in the, uh, oh, 20s. And uh, so, and back, and of course, you know, uh, segregation of groups was definite back then, especially in the South. But uh, they had a move of God outside on the property there, and they had uh, Choctaw Indian people and dark-skinned people and light-skinned people, folks from all kinds of groups, got together and had, had the move of God and got filled with the Spirit <laughs> out there, outside, and there was a big pond on my granddad's property, and they got baptized in the pond. <laughs> and I knew what my grandma had was real. Nobody could have told me that that wasn't real. And, and I, I hungered for it, especially as I got to be a little older, you know, 15, 16 years, 17 years old. I didn't speak with tongues. I had not received. And I didn't know why. And I'd go to revival meetings and tarry. That's all we knew to do was, what do you mean? Well, we were just taught to go to the altar and pray and basically just keep asking God to fill you with the Spirit. That's, that's all we knew. And um, I did this for, I don't know, hours at a time. And people said, well, you know, if you'll wear a different kind of clothes, that'll help. So I tried that and that didn't help. And even back then at 16, I had a mustache and they said, well, if you'll shave that mustache off, then maybe the, I, I did and that didn't help. And, and so, <laughs> you know, just trying different things. Looking back later when I finally did receive, I didn't receive during that time. It was, it was only after I learned about Brother Kenneth Hagin's ministry and got a hold of his books about how to receive the Holy Spirit. I finally learned how to receive. But looking back, in one night in particular, we tarried at the altar and a bunch of men were with me praying around me and there were some ladies on the other side of the altar praying. We're tarrying. And I'm praying, oh God, Give me the Holy Ghost. Oh, oh God. Now, I was serious as I could be. And everybody else was patting me on the back and saying, you know, hold on, brother, and turn loose, brother. And, and so you really don't know whether you're coming or going, man. But we're doing something. We're, we're after it. And uh, after about the second or third hour of this, I, I begin to feel something. And... I mean, the, there was a heaviness. Well, you know, the Bible talks about the glory of God, and it's the same word as for heavy. And it is heavy. When you sense the presence of God, a lot of times you just want to kind of slide down in your chair. It's a heavy, good, heavy with everything good. And um, so I just, it, it was so strong on me, I just kind of draped over the altar. I'm not even lifting my head. And then... It got stronger and stronger. It's the presence of the Holy Spirit. And I heard, I felt this guy fall over here beside me. I felt this guy fall over here. I turned my head. Everybody had fallen out under the power and we just lay in there. And I'm, uh, I'm still going, give me the Holy Ghost. Oh, God. <laughs> now, y'all are laughing, but... I was as serious as I could be. I didn't know it, but looking back now, I thought, dummy, he's all over you. Come on, can you see that? He's on you so strong, nobody can stand up around you. He's going, hello, I'm here. And you're going, oh God, give me the Holy Ghost. Like he's not even on the continent, you know. Give me the Holy Ghost. Why did I say all that? The reason I never spoke in tongues at that point I didn't respond to him. Come on, can you see this class? I did not yield to him. He won't make you speak in tongues. He won't make you receive Jesus. He won't make you receive healing. He won't make you receive anything. He'll help you. Oh, was he trying to help me? He knew our hearts. And he's trying to give me, he's given us extra help. His presence was so strong. And yet, I did not speak because I did not yield. To yield means, one, one definition of it, is to act on the promptings and urgings of the Holy Spirit. When He prompts you to do something, you need to respond. 
you need, if he prompts you, you know, to speak, then what should happen next is you have to make the effort to speak. When you speak in tongues, it's not the Holy Spirit speaking. 1 Corinthians 14 talks about if I pray in an unknown tongue, my spirit prayeth. Uh, I, I'm the one speaking. In the book of Acts, it said they were, they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke with other tongues. Who spoke with tongues? They did. Not the Holy Spirit. They did. He gave them utterance, but they did the speaking. And what helped me later when I did speak in tongues is that uh, I realized this, that I, God's not going to make me. And I used to say, you know, and didn't realize how foolish it was. I said, well, if you ever hear me talking in tongues, it won't be me. It'll be the Holy Ghost. I don't want it just to be me. Well, then you want the Holy Ghost to get the Holy Ghost. <laughs> See, I didn't, I didn't even know what I'm talking about, right? No, if you don't speak, you won't speak. You have to use your vocal cords, you have to use your tongue, you have to use your lungs, you have to make the effort to speak, just like when you're speaking in English or whatever your known uh, language is, the difference is the utterance is not coming out of your intellect and understanding and mind, it's coming out of your heart, it's coming from another place, but you still have to do the speaking. What am I talking about? When As a boy, uh, the Lord is training Samuel to be his prophet and to work with him on behalf uh, of the nation, and he calls to him. Could God have just lit up the room (laughs) and and with some amazing background music (laughs) and just moved in and Samuel uh, had no question? This is the Almighty. God could stick his face in the sky today <clears throat> and light up the planet, and there would, by, you know, within an hour's time, there wouldn't be a man or woman on the planet that denied or questioned God's existence. But he won't do that. Why wouldn't he do that? There'd be no faith involved then. And without faith, It's impossible to please him. And it would be him forcing the situation, forcing himself on the planet. He's not going to do that. That's contrary to his nature. So what uh, Eli, which was wisdom from God, what he told Samuel, he says, now next time he calls you, I'm paraphrasing, you respond and you say, speak, Lord. Your servant hears. He's resp- Can you see a yielding here? Can you see an inviting? Yes, Lord. I want to know what you're saying to me. I want to hear it. A yielding to the Spirit. So even though uh, God speaks, even though He endeavors to minister something to us, that's not the whole thing. Uh, he, when it comes to us, the, we must act on the promptings. We must act on the urgings. If he prompts you to pray, then you've got to pick it up and pray. Can you see that? Yes. If he prompts you to give, he's not going to make you give. You have to respond to it and go, okay, I'll do that. I'm going to give that. If he prompts you to obey, to talk to somebody about something, to pray something, whatever it is. But when we make the choice to yield to the Spirit, to act on the promptings and urgings of the Lord, that's when you see manifestations of God's power because we have invited Him into our life. We have given Him access. How many want God all up in your business? How many? Huh? Do you want somebody say, God, I want you all in my business? I, in all my business. All in my business. Well, you, you got to invite Him. And remember what he said, he stands at the door and knocks. Well, what does that mean? Then he he goes on to say, if any man, if anybody will do what? Open, open the door and invite him in. Then he said, then I'll come in 
and sup with him and he with me. In other words, we'll, we'll commune. We'll fellowship. There'll be a, uh, an exchanging and uh, back and forth. Thank God for, for knowledge and understanding about this. Don't you think this is important? To know it's not all up to God. And see, uh, this is so enlightening because why would God call him three times? <laughs> huh? Come on, come on, think about this now. Samuel, and that was it. Huh. He jumps up. Wouldn't it have been more efficient for God to just say, no boy, it's me. <laughs> don't, don't run in there to see Eli. This is God talking. <laughs> Would have saved a lot of back and forth, right? When you see how God, uh, uh, later on we'll see Sam, God send Samuel to Jesse's house. And he told him, he said, I've selected one of his sons. And when he gets there, he doesn't know which one. <laughs> they bring out the oldest. He says, it's not him. Next, not him. Next, not him. Went through all of them. Not him. He, you'd have thought, man, I missed it. He said, you got any more boys? Yeah, got one. Young one out in the field. But you know, he's wild. Guitar player. <laughs> Slingshot guy. You know. <laughs> <laughs> and he said, well, we're not going to sit down until he comes. They brought him in. The Lord said, that's him. Wouldn't it have been easier for him to just tell him who it was before he got there? Yeah, but it wouldn't have been faith. Can you see? He, he wants you to walk by faith with each step. Just do what I said. Just take the next step. Trust me. I'm going to lead you to the right one. You're going to wind up at the right place at the right time. But when you require to know the whole picture before you'll move, you're refusing to walk by faith. You're saying, I got to see, I got to know for, I'm going to step out. You're demanding to walk by sight. And he does, he's not pleased with those that do that. Say it out loud, I'm not of those, not of those who, demand who demand to walk by sight. Walk by sight. I live by faith. I, live by faith. I walk by faith. I, walk by faith. I overcome this world. By faith, I'm strong in faith giving glory to God. Yes, you are. Yes, you are, class. That's it for our time today, but we are not done, as you can see. Come back tomorrow for more Faith School. We'll see you soon. I've got a victory living inside. Thank you for joining us at Faith School. Class is dismissed for today, but you can watch this and other episodes of Faith School free of charge at faithschool.org. For more information, visit our website or call us at 941-702-7390.